how did you get a job if i am a recruiter will i hire myself so that was the first question i asked initially develop myself mm. in a way of communication because communication is kind of like more underrated skill where designers need to uh, develop themselves in us they weren't interested on the final output product they were deeply interested on how a process goes on and they want to understand like what what are the mistakes and what are the backlogs you faced and how did you overcome that these are the main points they were focusing on so fundamentally you learn ux design and you are implementing the ux in your life exactly you can so if, you if you can put it that way that is a fun way yeah so you are uh, implementing the same principles and yeah. you are not uh, so they'll be like uh, focusing on how you approach the problem and uh, in spite of how you approach they will have some culture related things also like yeah so if you are getting rejected that means you are going to get a, a better one so that is the thing you are saying yeah exactly uh, excellent very positive thought <laughs> yeah so- Hi everyone in today's podcast we are going to discuss about uh, how to get a job how to switching over the job right so what are the things the people they are looking for so this is i'm going to have a, a detailed discussion with jitesh so let's get started how did you get a job as a ux designer <laughs> <laughs> okay i never knew that this was going to be a topic okay yeah sure so initially what i did was like uh, i thought or oh, if i'm a recruiter will i hire myself so that was the first question i asked initially after doing that uh, education and design things and everything you heard so after that uh, what i thought was like if i am doing the design is it like up to the industry standard level or is it i uh, expect is it up to the mark that where the recruiter will be like okay wow i need this person i need to hire this guy so that i can boost up my career boost up my business or whatever that stuff thing so when i asked myself uh, that question was like that sort of big wrong over there so i started to uh, develop myself in a way by um, in a way of communication because communication is kind of like more underrated skill where designers need to uh, develop themselves because as down the road going down the road they will be like more dealing with design stuff will be getting lesser and lesser and going on in the meetings will be higher and higher so they need to focus on that part also on that part also and after that um, what i did is like after doing the wireframe i didn't wait till i complete the case study so i was like very restless and i was like very enthusiastic okay i need to know what what is happening over there and what stuff is going to help me and what is the current situation in the market over there so the kind of stuff i was very excited and uh, very confused also in the same time so to break that i did like uh, even in the wireframe stage itself so i started to do yeah do some interviews to understand what is the expectation in the market and after i gained some expectation i thought like uh recruiters and uh, design lead designers who are into into uh, interviewing us they weren't interested on the final output product they were deeply interested on how a process goes on and they want to understand like what what are the mistakes and what are the backlogs you faced and how did you overcome that these were the main points they were focusing on because the if they hire you they want to know like if there are some kind of hurdles or some kind of speed breaker kind of thing that happens in your uh, job or in your process how will you tackle that so apart from gaining the end product the tackling the or approaching the problem is like highly focused in over there so that is the one of the most important thing that they focus so i thought look uh, i can make sure that i strengthen myself in that area and strengthen myself in communication and strengthen myself in uh, detail oriented so i kind of lack the detail orientation like an eye for detail things because i kind of like how to see the big picture okay i'll see like okay this is okay this is okay this is okay then that's it so that was like a bad habit for me uh, to overcome that i need to do some stuff gain some knowledge and understand more like how the design works so and uh, that is that takes a lot of time to have a knife for the detail minute details things so yeah so fundamentally you learn ux design and you are implementing the ux in your life exactly you can so if, you can, <laughs> if you can put it that way that is also fun way yeah so you are uh, implementing the same principles and yeah. you are not uh, 
you are focusing on uh, how the employers are reacting so you are doing the observations <laughs> you are conducting the research how yeah. they are conducting the interviews yeah. what they are looking from an employee right yeah exactly. so all the things you are <laughs> i started to observe from that so you observe and you conduct the research kind of a stuff and <laughs> finally you come to the conclusion these all are the things they are looking for and you yeah. are did the same thing and yeah. you got a job yeah exactly that's the part so very interesting actually so mm-hmm. in most of the thing what happened in our students they have done a, what do you call it, design for separate portfolio thing and they have to go to the job applying for a job and if they fail the interview in the first round itself or they the first attempt next. itself they get frustrated <laughs> i am not eligible i am getting a job no so yeah that rejection is kind of like a most important thing even whatever domain or whatever business you run because rejection is a part where you will understand what are the things that you are making wrong first mm-hmm. and okay. after knowing that because we humans tend to make mistakes a lot of time without knowing and unknowingly we make the mistakes so to rectify that mistake we need someone to reject us <laughs> then only we will be able to it will be touching our like pride it will touch our pride and we will be like because we are mostly driven by emotions and that's why we are like focusing on okay i'm not fit for this or i'm not like we will easily give up so that is that shouldn't be the case rejection is just a past or part of life you will be you would have been rejected by numerous uh, places even when you go to buy some product in your shop also they will be getting like now i don't have this just go away <laughs> like that just that, that, that happens in our day to day life but the impact that's creating in our life that is what matters in you know, order to us so that drives us emotion yeah. so yeah recently it happened to me also <laughs> so i bought a laptop almost uh-huh. i'm going to pay the money and that time what happened the stock is not there <laughs> <laughs> the final piece being sold out go to somebody else yeah. so even i was so frustrated <laughs> okay so today is not my day yeah. but anyway i'm going to buy the thing in a different showroom yeah. on a different day that's it because the on the day you got to get to buy the laptop you got to purchase a new better laptop if the like new users focusing you in a way <laughs> driving you okay this is not fit for you go for this like that yeah absolutely yeah so if you are getting rejected that means you are going to get a, a better one so that is the thing you are saying yeah exactly uh, excellent very positive thought <laughs> yeah. so how do you switch over to the next job that was your first job right yeah. now you are switching over to the next job right yeah so uh i was initially i worked in a product based company so i was like okay uh i know how the product based company works now i know and how the since i was only designer over there i wanted to work with other designers that was my main my main goal if you i want to say and i want to work in a domain or company or industry where they are fully focused on design alone when i was searching for that type of parameters i got to know like design studios are the only people or only business that are focusing only on design branding and other stuff they aren't focusing on like handing off to developers and those stuff so i was like okay now i want to move on to the design studio and how would i do that so to do that uh, design studios have a uh, next level of uh, expectation on designers so they'll be like uh, focusing on how you approach the problem and uh, in spite of how you approach they will have some culture related things also like how you behave or if they are if the company is like a very fun oriented company where they do the work as a fun and you're like okay i did this i'm not going to do that <laughs> like if you're going to speak like john wick or if you're going to speak with uh, someone like uh, raghuvaran from basha then that would mean that wouldn't fit for them so uh when i narrowed down okay i want to now join a design studio so i started to polish up my portfolio to up to that expectation level and when they gave the task um for me to like a normal kind of thing that happens for every designer so that's the second part of the interview that like they'll be giving some task and we'll be doing that so what i solely focused on like uh, how can i make this design in an industry standard where they wouldn't reject me of course there will be some flaws there will be some mistakes and there will be some backlogs everything will be that because in that during that time uh i wasn't aware of all the stuff that's happening over there even now it's like constantly learning from this so i made sure how am i going to present in a way where i know there are mistakes over there but i'm constantly <coughs> trying to learn and eliminate that uh, mistakes down the road but not now but while doing the process so i made sure to convey that i am capable of adapting 
and I made sure that I am able to learn in a way and I am an enthusiastic person. So I made sure to, not in spite of uh, not saying like, okay, I am an enthusiastic person, I can work adaptively. Instead of saying directly like that, I conveyed them to my actions. So that was a part of the thing that I loaded. So how did you convey that? Okay, uh, so during the task what I did was like, uh, they asked one question like, uh, did you, uh, for a specific feature, I placed a block in the design, like in the first fold itself. I knew that this was somewhere, it was uh, not giving some proper knowledge or proper sense to me. So I was like, okay, let's make sure of this part alone. And if they ask the question, uh, let me tell the truth. Like, what was the purpose I did this? And what was I expecting and what he came in the real time way. So when I conveyed, like uh, I thought of the main part was like uh, I thought the like, users can gain some insights from the blogs via articles. And it wasn't that high much priority. I know that also. So I conveyed to a specific interview person like uh, I thought like we can add this, but I wasn't sure like this way if this will add value or not. But I thought of like keeping this, but down the road we can remove it or based on some research, I can eliminate it. So by this sentence, I gave them like, I was doubtful in that specific uh, part alone. And I don't know why I kept this, but I thought something, some kind of value might be added over that. But I might be wrong. But I am okay to eliminate that also, to uh, emphasize and enhance that part alone. So by this method, they were like, okay, he is doing, he knows what he's doing. So like that. So you are not giving any concurrent of the thing. You are uh, flexible to adapt exactly. stuff and you are uh, welcoming for the changes. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So Excellent. adapting the account of the changes, that's the most crucial and highly important thing. Because the watch we are wearing, the phone we are using, everything changes. So if those things changes, we have to change. <laughs> so that was the main thing, uh, motto for my. Okay. So yeah. everything is can be changeable. Yeah, changeable. Evolutable. <laughs> Evolute. I'm not sure if that's the right word. <laughs> so, uh, so evolution. Evolution. So, evolution. Yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. I hope you like this topic today. And uh, if you have any queries, we will discuss on the comment section. I will catch you soon with another interesting conversation with another person. Until then, bye bye. Small announcement. Recently, I have written a book. The book name called uh, Foundations of UX Research. So this is a book. So this book is available on Amazon and Flipkart. Even in uh, ebook also is been available. So I'm going to share the link in the description. If you want to buy this book, you can check out those links. Mm -hmm.